Ready for a data analysis marathon? Yeah. Just like the last one. your lab members to data. Can I have the last names of the people? Uh, Do you know Ethan's last name? Reese Lee. R-I-S-L-E-Y. My name's Zoe. I thought I typed their names in there. Their last gift the last time, and half of them are just their first name. <clears throat> just a second here. This other kid is, oh, yeah. Horeshi, Q U E R S H I. Find them.
That didn't work. Morning, Scott. How you doing? Good. How are you? All right. Did you uh, email your data to? Yep. So if you haven't received the graph from your lab partner, please do that. Send the graph to your lab partner. Oh, that's a bummer. Like I said, if you haven't emailed your data to your lab group, please do that. you're ready for a big data uh, crunching day. So what I did was I created a new data table and I put it into Canvas. So if you go, let me share my screen here. And just a reminder that um, I have the chat room up, which then broadcasts onto the Apple TV. So anything you put in the chat room is visible to everyone. So if you go into, um, powers, or if you go into Canvas, and you go to where's the lab? That's what it's on. Qureshi, Q U E R. There it is, the Equilibrium Lab. Um, I up I uploaded a new data table in there, so you might want to 
And I don't know why, but it looks weird on here. But when you upload it into Notability, it won't look so weird, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna walk through those calculations one by one. And we're gonna start with letter A. So we only have to do one example calculation for this, okay? And I'm gonna use, uh, Okay, so let's start with letter A. By the way, guys, it's helpful if you um, zoom in before class starts so that you're not walking in the middle of something and then you're wondering like what's going on. All right, so A, record the volume of iron for your solution. So we're gonna do solution number one first. So what is the volume from solution number one of iron nitrate? It was five mils. Where did I get that? I got from, from table two. What is the volume of iron thionitrate? One milliliter. That's how much you added. Measure the absorbance of your test solution. So your lab partner should have emailed you your data from your test solution. So why don't you, you guys got your graph, not graph. I'm just going to take a picture here of what that page looks like. So your lab partner should have emailed you this, the test solutions, okay? I'm going to create a new notability here because I'm tired of going back and forth. We got one mil, five mils, one mil. Now the absorbance, what is the absorbance for your first solution? So the absorbance for the first solution If we were in, um a larger group and there are two people who did the same one or the same experiment should we use the more accurate one or our own um so there's only one person who did the test solutions in your lab group now there's there could be more than one person who did the graph but this is the test solutions not the standard solutions the test solutions only the cats did the test solutions. So who's in your group, Avery? Uh, it was Tyler, Jackson, and Coulter. 
Jackson Deering. Jackson Deering should have emailed you all the data. If he didn't, yell at him. I'm pretty I sure I did email you guys the data. Yeah, I have that. So, so, okay. Also, but I got the negative number for one of the test solutions. So should we use like someone else's data or use someone else's no, data we, for that we, one? Oh, for that one data point, throw it out. If you have a negative observance, you just throw it out. You can't Can we steal it. Pence then? Which, like which steal this one? one? It was which, the two. I can go check, but I think it was the the one for one. Test solution one. Um, if you had a negative absorbance for test solution number one, then just go to right away to test solution number two. So you'll have four mm. test solutions instead of five. Okay. So we got five milliliters, one milliliter, and then the absorbance is 0 0.063. Calculate the total number of moles of iron initially present in your solution. So, for letter D, we had five mils of iron nitrate. Now, this got to convert it to liters. Because you want the moles of iron nitrate, right? Not the molarity, but the moles. So that many liters. And then what was my molarity? Two times 10 to the negative third moles of iron nitrate. So I'm going to grab my calculator. Oh, where's my nice calculator? I left in the back room. So then um, Avery, Deering and Calder, you're gonna be using test solution number two and its volumes. Because test solution number two had a different volume of potassium thiocyanate that had two mils instead of one. So the moles is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of iron. So that's, I'm gonna put there in D. So, so far, um, except for the absorbance, except for the absorbance, everybody's numbers should be the same. Well, except for Deering's group. Now, what about the initial moles of thiocyanate. Well, we took one mil of thiocyanate. Convert to liters. And the molarity on that was also two times 10 to the negative third. So I end up with two times 10 to the negative six moles of SCM. So I know it's kind of annoying to have to go back and forth between big screen and small screen, but 
that's the way it is. How are we doing at home? Am I going too fast? Do I need to give you a little time to catch up here? I can post the recording on Canvas so you can watch it every day during spring break. All right, so far, like I said, except for Deering's group, which had a negative absorbance, everybody's numbers should be the same, except the absorbance value, okay? So what you guys, what the wilds did was they created a calibration curve. The calibration curve is where you take a known concentration So I'm just taking Mike's picture here. So they had five known concentrations. And those known concentrations were four times 10 to the negative fifth, six times 10 to the negative fifth, eight, 10, 12, all to the negative fifth. Molarity. So you had the, you knew the concentration and then you measured the absorbance and then based on that, you ended up with a calibration curve. Now, you know that the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus b. Well, what's on the y-axis? Absorbance. What's on the x-axis? Concentration. The y-intercept is zero, so we don't have to worry about b. And what's our slope? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, here's our slope, but they write it, they already, they kind of put it, looks to me like backwards. They're saying concentration is equal to the slope times absorbance. Um, so we're gonna have to probably calculate our, our slope from that. So let's just start with their equation. Concentration equals 23.6782 times absorbance. Actually, no, it's better we use theirs. Okay, so concentration. So obviously you're using your own graph that you had for your lab. So concentration is equal to 23.6782 times the absorbance. So for letter F, it says find the concentration using your calibration curve. So for letter F, I'd be using this equation, concentration is equal to 23.6782 times the absorbance. Well, what was the absorbance? Go back up to your chart. There's my absorbance, 0 0.063. Then you should calculate the concentration. And I get So go ahead and calculate that. I'm just gonna double check something here. Okay. 
So this is going to be to the negative fifth molar. The computer wouldn't allow me to put in exponents, but that's to the uh, to the negative fifth. So all of your concentrations, you just have to add on times 10 to the negative fifth, okay? So now this would be the concentration of iron thiocyanate. So then I write that in up there, 1.49 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Letter G, calculate the number of moles of the complex ion present in your solution based on the concentration found in step F and the total solution volume. Okay, so we wanna know the moles of iron thiocyanate. That takes us to letter G. So if this is my concentration, I wanna find the number of moles. How many moles of iron thiocyanate? Well, if I know the molarity, and I know of my volume, I should be able to calculate the moles. So what was my volume? Well, I'm just going to take another picture here and show you temporarily. So what is my total volume for solution number one? In fact, all of the solutions, all of the volumes add up to 10 milliliters. So all the test solutions add up to 10 mils. Just to let you know, when I've got my screen share on, I don't get a notification that someone's in Zoom. All right, so that means if I have 10 mils, a thousand milliliters are in a liter, and my molarity is for every one liter, I get this many moles. So let's calculate then the moles of iron thiocyanate. One point four nine times ten to the negative seventh moles. So now we go back up here, put that in our data table. Now let's find the amount of uncomplexed iron in each solution by subtracting the number of moles. In other words, we're gonna subtract G from B. So just to go over like what we're doing here is The iron, remember, is reacting with the thiocyanate to produce this. 
Well, we know the initial concentrations of both of these. So we have none of this, we know the initial concentrations. And now what we're doing is we're calculating the equilibrium concentrations. So we already found one. That was the equilibrium concentration of the iron thiocyanate. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out those equilibrium concentrations. Well, if we know what we started with and we know how much we lost, we should be able to figure out then what's left. Okay, so that's what we're doing in letter H. So in letter H, it says, take the moles of iron that you started with. Well, how many moles of iron did we start with? That many moles. How many moles of iron reacted? That many. So D minus G, will get us the number of moles for iron. I already forgot those numbers. One times 10 to the negative fifth. All right. So that's what we had initially minus That's how much reacted. So if we subtract that, we'll get with what's left over or unreacted. Um, So now I'm going to put this answer up in slot H, 9.85 times 10 to the negative sixth. Moles. Let's just jump down to K real quick because the two are very much linked. And then we'll come back to I. Calculate the molarity of iron. Well, if my volume is 10 mils and I know my moles, well, I can calculate the molarity. So for letter K, I'm gonna take my moles of iron and divided by 10 milliliters. But of course you can't have your uh, volume in milliliters. So we're gonna convert it to liters, just shift the decimal point three places. We got 0 0.010 mil or liters. So my molarity is gonna be nine point 851 times 10 to the negative fourth molar of iron. So this is a good example of why I always harp on putting units and labels, because I mean, we got a billion numbers here. So you gotta be clear about, is this moles or is this molarity? Is this iron or is this thiocyanate? What am I talking about here? So I'll always label your stuff so that anybody can look at your data or your calculations and know what you're doing, all right? So that would be 8.51 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that in.
Oops, that should be for K, sorry. And now we're just gonna do the same thing for the thiocyanate, the SCN. We need to find the moles of thiocyanate which were not reacted. So we have to go figure out what did we start with? We started with this many moles, right? How many reacted? That many moles. So we're just gonna subtract G from E. what our number was to start off here. Two times 10 to the negative sixth. This should be a seven. So this is what we started initially. This is how much reacted. Check those numbers again. Oh, sorry, it should be that number, 1.497, wrong number. You need help, Ava? You really need help. Do you think I can read that small? No, but I can read eyes. Okay. You want to be filled, <laughs> you want to be filled on this, this thing out as you go. Okay. That's, that's fine. We don't know if this is correct for for ours. Like, look at these concentrations for these. That's fine. Four four six. Are you sure that's right? Yeah. Because that's a lot bigger than. It's all right. Point four four six, and then you got to plug that into your graph. So plug in point four four six to find the concentration. You guys have questions, you know. Stop and ask. All right. It doesn't do me any good if I just plow through this and everybody's confused. How are you doing, Nathan? Are you okay? I think I'm good. Pent. Let me just calculate this and then we'll see where we're at. Nineteen, yeah. like nineteen with no exponent, like that. I don't know if I plugged in the wrong number. So I did this, e I did this, which is there, and then divided by that. Just one second. I'm gonna help Nathan with the calculation. Divided by that, that's two to the negative four. That's two to the negative four. Negative six minus negative two, which means that I have negative four. Right? You subtract okay. that from subtraction. Your exponents get subtracted. It's division, but when you do division with exponents, it gets subtracted. So you go with two exponents to negative six. Divide the line. Four, 
I guess you didn't put the exponent or you forgot the something went wrong with your exponent. Okay, who needs some troubleshooting at home? Yep. So Avery, I told you my story about um, Socrates and what he told his students about um, the two beings on the planet that don't ask questions. No. I never told you that story. So Socrates, you know, good old Socrates, uh, he would always go out to the hill and teach his students. Um, and when his students didn't ask any questions, he said there were two types of beings in the universe that didn't ask questions. And that were the gods, because the gods knew all the answers. So why would they ask any questions? And then the beasts of the fields, because the beasts of the fields didn't have the faculties to answer, ask questions. That only humans, which lie in between animals and gods, would ask questions. So if you're not asking any questions, which category do you fall into? The gods? Okay, good. So never be ashamed to ask a question. So letter J, we're gonna find the molarity of the HCN. So we just have to divide it by our volume. So again, I'm just going to refer to this. Each test solution had a volume of 10. They all add up to 10. Suppose I should label it for the team. So then I put that into my table. Hard to remember these numbers. I forget by the time I scroll back up. <clears throat> One point eight five times ten to the fourth. And this one was one point eight five times ten to the sixth. That one's moles. That one's molarity. Now, what about the concentration of the H plus? So the reaction we're doing, and it's on the front page of the lab, so you can always go back and refer to it, is iron plus thiocyanate, I mean, uh, HCN, makes the iron thiocyanate plus H plus. That's the reaction. So we already calculated the equilibrium concentration of this, this, and this. So we calculated the equilibrium concentration of those three things. The only thing we have left is finding the equilibrium concentration of the H plus. So this is gonna be your easiest calculation. The concentration of the H plus is 0.5 molar. How did I get that? Well, if you look at your chart, The concentration of strong acid that's going to give us our H plus. Now, I know you're saying, Deering, but Mr. Strauss, you diluted that, right? 
So it can't be 0.5 molar because you diluted it. But au contraire, mon frère, all of these solutions were not made up in pure water. If you read the lab, as I know you guys all did, because to not read the lab would just be suicide when it comes to college labs. To walk into a college lab, Mike, without reading it beforehand is, is crazy. All the solutions were made up in 0.5 molar. I did not make them in pure water. All the solutions were mixed up in 0.5 molar nitric. So if they're all mixed with 0.5 molar nitric, there is no dilution effect. So they all have that concentration, 0.5 molar H. So that's why all we have to do is write it in 0.5. So now we know all the equilibrium concentrations. So for letter M, we can now calculate it. So products over reactants. So there's our equilibrium expression. And then we just take the equilibrium concentrations off of our data table. So we just have to go back up. The equilibrium concentrations are there, there, there. And there, those are equilibrium concentrations. We got the thiocyanate right there, the HCN right there, the iron right there, and the H plus right there. So we take those four. We Is plug them in. G not F? Um, no, because F gives me molarity and equilibrium concentration has to be in molarity. G is telling me the number of moles, but that's a very good question. It is very easy to get those two things mixed up, but we want molarity to be plugged in, not moles. So it'll be a miracle if I can remember all these numbers. So now that we know all the equilibrium concentrations we can calculate, Of course, when I'm grading your lab, I'm gonna be looking to see if you're using your own concentrations. You got two sig figs, so 40.88 becomes 41. So my equilibrium constant is 41. I 
I hope I'm putting it my just one second. I gotta show someone how to use their calculator. But I'm sure you can use some time to do some calculating. So type in you don't need parentheses to see some of these little multiplication conditions. So it's this times this. So imagine this. Suppose you're just gonna take that, like mm -hmm. this times this, and you divide by that, right? Suppose that number didn't exist. That times this divided by that. So you would type divide by for that, right? You type divide by for that one. Okay. So when you put it in, both of these should be divided. Not this times this divided by this times this. Okay. That would give you, that would be like saying, if you have this, your calculator would type this in your calculator like this. Take A times B divided by C. Okay. Divided by D. Okay. okay, that's the way the calculator would be. My numbers were a lot higher than yours. That's a better, that's a better, that's a better number. What's the difference? Um, well, no, no, like. Still got a wonky right, number right. to do that. So not the right thing. You still got a wonky number? Yeah. So what's the point? Point zero. Ah. Point zero four two. Second exponent, right? Negative fifth. Uh, point five. Divided by x point eight and six negative four divided by one point nine two x point negative seven point two seven four. This number looks a little bit small. And seven or a two and seven. That would mean it might be you, it might be right. We'll find out when we start doing the other ones. <clears throat> but let's, let's finish it and then I can come back and take a little look at that calculation. Mine gets, look, look at that now. It looks like mine was to the negative four. Talk about this one? Yeah. That's, so that actually, that one's calculated right. Just go back and look at this one. This one should be G minus E. So that's the negative seven. That's for I. It's that minus that. So Take G from E. That minus that. Well, 
that from the beginning. I'm going to have to, I have to go start from scratch from that, look through that. But that one number looks, looks good. Oh, sorry, took too long here. Sorry about that. I was helping uh, someone with calculation. So now that you have your K value, the last step is to determine the delta G of the reaction. And so delta G is related to K with the following equation, RT ln of K. I don't know if you remember, but if, if K is greater than one, the Ford reaction dominates or is favored. If K is less than one, the reverse reaction is favored. So I'm gonna take my delta, I'm gonna calculate my delta G. R has to be 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin times my temperature we were at room temperature, which is 298 Kelvin. And then the LN of my K, and in this case, my K was 41. And I get negative 9,196 with two sig figs, the joules with two sig figs, it's negative 9,200 joules. I'm just gonna go ahead and convert that to kilojoules right away. Now, this is a good lesson in many ways. So like if you got lost early on, then you're gonna be lost the rest of the hour. So if you don't ask a question early on, that did not behoove you to do that. Um, always ask questions. So I will, I'm going nowhere for spring break. I'm gonna sit in my basement, power down and wait for school to resume. So. Uh, I will, um, I'll, I'll schedule a Zoom for people that need some help on this lab. Um, 7 a.m. sound good? Uh, I'll actually put it in the evening. I'll maybe do it, what, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock p.m. for those of you who want to join. And I'll send an announcement out. It won't be like Monday, maybe like Wednesday. I'll let you guys chew on it for a little bit. Because um, what you're going to have to do now is after you do that, you have to redo all these calculations for all the other test solutions. So we just did solution one. So we just did all of that, okay? Now, Deering, you guys don't have a test solution one because you had a negative absorbent. You're gonna to have to go through and do this for um, the rest of them. So this was five mils. All of them have five mils of this. So some of the data is not gonna change. What's really changing is the thiocyanate. One, two, three, four, five. 
because the amount of iron isn't changing, your initial moles is not going to change in the lab. So I can just go back to my other table and write that in. See, the initial moles is 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. How about the initial moles of HCN? Well, let's write that in, our initial moles of HCN. And again, this number should be the same for everybody. The initial moles for HCN was two times 10 to the negative sixth. Now, here's how your math is gonna go faster. If one milliliter gave me that many moles, what would two milliliters give me? Twice as many, right? If I have twice as much volume, I should have twice as many moles. And what's two? twice as big as two, two times two is four. So then this would be twice as big as well, eight. You can probably then guess what would this one be and that one be. So you don't always have to do a ton of math. I would just probably leave it in the in half. I'd probably just leave it like that instead of turning it to the negative fifth. Because you, I mean, if you want to turn it into negative fifth, that's fine, but usually then it's easier just mentally. Your absorbance, you get all your absorbances from. your lab partner who emailed them to you. So I'm just gonna fill mine in, 0 0.63, 0 0.166, 0 0.255, 0 0.352, 0 0.441, now, this is where I was saying, if you somehow have a negative absorbance, then you can't do that one. There's something wrong. And then from your graph, let me use a different color. Concentration was equal to whatever your graph that your lab team sent you, that equation will give you your concentration times 10 to the negative fifth, whatever that is. So concentration would equal 23.678 times 10 to the negative fifth times your absorbance, okay? So that will get you your concentration and then you just do the exact same thing that we did for the rest of this. Now it asks for the class average. So um, I will create a spreadsheet for you guys to throw your class average in. But I think what I'm gonna try to do is uh, I'll talk with my wife and see what is a good night, but I'll plan an evening, like maybe it's nine o'clock 
nine o'clock is not too late for you guys. Is it 9 p.m.? At night? I'm just double checking at night. I go to bed at nine. I'm so serious. I No, that's good. That's good, I'm Ava. So Ava, that's good. Um, well, maybe I'll do two of them. If you need help during the day, Ava, I can help you during the day. But usually most people want to, at least last year, AP Chem students, when we were completely asynchronous, they wanted to meet in the evening. They didn't want to meet during the day. But I don't really care. That is late. Somebody asked if they could FaceTime me at 9 o'clock to go over the essay we're writing in AP Lit today. And I said, no. Nope. So let's make the lab do... Um, Let's see, how about um, Friday, next week, Friday? That gives you a week. So that's the only thing you have to do over spring break. Okay, don't worry about chapter 15 problems at all. If you wanna work on chapter 15 for your own knowledge, go for it. But I will put this in the power school due Friday, okay? Um, how do you calculate the theoretical? Oh, well, it tells you in the lab how to calculate the theoretical. So you can do that on your own. Or if you don't know how to calculate the theoretical, just email me and I will let you know. Have a wonderful spring break. And again, if you get stuck, email me. We'll set up a time. Okay. Thank you. About problem set one. Thank you. But you don't need to do chapter 15.